How's it going boys? Razine here for Astrophotography and today's episode of the night sky. We're looking at the night sky in May. I wonder how many times I can say that in a sentence. Anyway, so this is a curated list of deep sky objects, planets, moon, meteor showers, etc. like that, that I think are interesting during the night sky in May. That's probably four times now, maybe three. Targets for a variety of focal lengths, all based off of a 1.5 crop sensor value, but I will have equivalents on the right hand side of the frame here. So with that said, let's get going. And we're gonna start with a 50 millimeter image. So if you have a 50 millimeter camera frame, then this is the Seda region in the constellation of Cygnus. It's the heart of the cross basically. And this is a big blooming nebulous region with the butterfly nebula, or one of the butterfly nebulas in there. And also it's a wider field of view, so you're gonna capture more of it. Put something like a clip-in narrowband filter into your camera body, you're gonna have a great time getting all those fine details out. So, 50 millimeters, Seda. Still representing Cygnus at 100 to 200 millimeters of focal length. I'm gonna be presenting and suggesting NGC 7000, the North American Nebula and also the Pelican Nebula. You can get both of them in the same frame. This is an emission type nebula. So again, narrowband filters will be your best friend, but if you have enough time and enough clear skies, something that's a premium in the United Kingdom as always, then you could try doing something like a HARGB image where you have the beautiful nitrile star colors, but all those intricate nebulous details are accentuated with the hydrogen alpha data. So. If I was at 100 to 200 millimeters, then that's what I'd suggest shooting. At 300 millimeters, it really wasn't going to take me long to recommend something in Cepheus, and that's going to be the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. And at 300 millimeters, you can fit this very large nebula in one frame. It's a bit tight, admittedly, so you are filling the frame. Maybe 250 millimeters would also work nicely, so you know, you people earlier, 100, 200, 300 millimeters. Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Again, emission-based nebula will respond really well to narrowband imaging, but also RGB will turn out some very beautiful images of this target. At 400 to 500 millimeters, I'm gonna be recommending NGC 6914. So this is like a wispy kind of hydrogen alpha area, just quite close to the Seda region. At 50 millimeters, you guys will be picking this up as well, but at 400 to 500, you can punch in on it and get some intricate details out. The issue with Cygnus is it still is a bit low, probably next month is going to be even better, but from about 11 o'clock at night it is over 20 degrees altitude and with the skies getting darker, uh, lighter and lighter and our imaging time being shorter, by about this point it's actually a viable target in my opinion, so I'm recommending it. 400 to 500 millimeters, NGC 6914. At 600 to 700 millimeters we're back in the constellation of Leo, which means galaxies. M96 and a few surrounding galaxies around it. It's not just Macarian's train or the Leo triplet that you can shoot multiples of. At 600 to 700, you can get M96 and several other galaxies in the same frame with the correct image rotation. And you know, as galaxy season begins to come to an end, this is a good fitting swan song for this year. So I feel like at these focal lengths, I'd be comfortable recommending this group of galaxies to image. For 800 millimeters, I'm gonna be recommending an emission nebula in the constellation of Volpica, Vol Volpcula. At 800 millimeters, I'm gonna be recommending an emission nebula in the constellation of Volpecula, or is that Volpecula if it's a Latin soft V? I don't know. This is an emission-based nebula, NGC 6823. And again, as it's close to Cygnus, it is still quite low in the skies. About half past 11, it begins to raise, but because dark the like astronomical darkness is later and later i feel comfortable still recommending this it's on its way up as well so you'll have plenty of time during the night it'll just get better and better and better and as we go through the month it will raise earlier and earlier and earlier so that'll be my suggestion for 800 millimeters at 1000 millimeters i have a pair of galaxies for you to image and that is in virgo they're up all night so you have plenty of time to sink integration time onto these galaxies that is M89 and M90. Now at 1000 millimeters, you can frame them up quite nicely on the rule of thirds of the frame if you're into all that compositional elements. And I think it'll be a good thing to shoot during this time of the year. 
If you're at 1,500 millimeters, I'm gonna be recommending you to swing over to the constellation of Draco for NGC 5906, the Splinter Galaxy. This is a very thin needle-like galaxy, and I think it looks very interesting. Rich star field around it from the appearance of it. And so this would also work at 2,000 millimeters, but I have something else for that. So 1,500 millimeters, I'd be recommending the Splinter Galaxy in Draco. And for at 2,000 millimeters, if you don't fancy the Splinter Galaxy, there's another one in Virgo. It is NGC 4753, the Dust Devil Galaxy. So even at 2,000 millimeters, it is relatively small into the frame. So you have even longer focal lengths than 2,000 when you aim at this as well. But it's a nice little blob of a galaxy in the frame. And because it's small, it could be interesting to photograph. So 2000 millimeters, Virgo, that's my recommendation. Planets, um, whoa, this is awkward. There's not really anything for you in May, unfortunately. Like Jupiter and Saturn do raise, but they're about three o'clock in the morning and they're below 20 degrees altitude. So you can be shooting through all that muck in our atmosphere. The seeing is gonna probably be quite poor. And I just don't think it's worth staying up or getting up for. So with your really long focal length planetary imaging rigs, maybe do some close-up lunar work. But before we get to the lunar phases for May, we have the meteor shower at the Aquids in the constellation of Aquarius. Now I mentioned this last month, but it was up during the day. And well, it's kind of up, but you need to be up at 3 a.m. and it's just cresting, you know, like dawn, twilight time. So. If you really are dedicated and you want to try and scope some Eta Aquid meteors out, that's about the time you want to do it, about 3 a.m. in the constellation of Aquarius. So the lunar phases for May, you people with really high magnification planetary telescopes, looking at you. Last quarter falls on the 3rd of May. New moon is 11th of May. First quarter is the 19th of May. And the full flower moon is the 26th of May. So again, you people with the really big telescopes, why don't you make a mosaic of the moon? There you go, that's my challenge for you for this month. And then be sure to tag me on it because boy would I love to see that. And with that, that's the night sky in May all wrapped up. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's given you some inspiration of what to photograph or made you aware of some targets that you previously didn't think of before. Let me know down in the comments below if your suggestions for May. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs down if you think I could have done better. And with that, thanks very much for watching Clear Skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.